Our scripture lesson for this Monday, Thursday comes from Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 27. Would you please stand for the reading of the Monday, Thursday story from Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 22, through verses 14 through 27. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread... And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated and let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are our rock and our redeemer. And if in the words of this one we hear not the voice of God, then please speak to each of us in the quietness of our own hearts. Amen. Sometimes a fresh look at Scripture can kind of be a jolting, an unsettling, a jolting experience, such as reading this memory of the Last Supper from Luke's Gospel. Let me remind you, Jesus has asked his disciples to share this feast with him before he suffers, which must have certainly aroused fear in the disciples, a dread which they had been carrying with them for several days now because they do understand, says Luke, they understand that if their master must suffer, then they are going to have to suffer as well. And yet, Jesus takes it far beyond that. He takes bread, he takes the cup, and he uses them to teach them something about his life and his love. And his words must have deeply moved his followers, must have moved them and and frankly mystified them as well. And whatever else they thought Jesus was trying to say, certainly it was obvious to them That for Jesus, this is a deeply, deeply significant moment. So, we can hardly believe it when they start fighting with each other over who's the greatest. My reaction when I read that is, how petty, how unbelievably crass, How incredibly uncaring and insensitive can they be? 
Here's Jesus right now offering them the most sacred of all rituals. And what do they do? They squabble around the table. They act like a bunch of little kids trying to fight over who's number one, who's the lead dog, who's God's top gun. They're fighting at the dinner table. Now, before I get myself all riled up about it, maybe my indignation at the disciples might be tempered a bit if I remember experiences I have had at table and at meals. I don't know about the tables and meals that you have experienced in life, but I can think back of meal times, table times, and some of them have been the most wonderful and some of them have been the most worst experiences that I can remember. Some of the most beautiful and some of the most ugly experiences, have you ever noticed, take place at the table, take place during meals. I can remember birthday cakes, proudly brought to their place before the birthday girl and the birthday boy and the, the eyes of that child sparkling with candles glow. I can remember holiday meals where jokes and laughter and funny stories are shared about school and work and family memories. But I can also remember disagreements, hurtful words flung across the table at each other. I have seen people leave the table in tears over some bitterness or frustration our disappointment shared there. Sometimes the prayer of blessing the meal was recited in cold tones, masking the hostility. Sometimes the animosity at table and family fights were such that it just really wasn't possible to pray the prayer out loud together. Can you remember in your own history and journey both beautiful and painful times at the family meal. Now, ideally, family meals, the meals we share with each other, should be a family communion, a coming together of our plans and our experiences and our feelings. Why, then, do shared meals so often degenerate into power struggles, into airing our dissatisfactions with either ourselves or with each other, I think, I think it just might be the truth of the matter is we're scared. We're scared. We're scared of being called to the highest and the best. The words of Jesus in, at the Lord's Supper called the disciples to rise above themselves and to become something bigger, higher, better than they've ever been before. And that's frightening. It's frightening when... when when we are called to be something more than we've ever been. It's kind of the fear, some of us may remember, our parents would put into us when they'd say, we really expect you to have good grades in school. Or we're really expecting you to set a good example for your younger sister. And such high expectations began to make us doubt ourselves a little bit. And it was usually not long before our behavior tries to prove that we're just human after all. Now the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke is the only Gospel of the four that remembers arguing at the Last Supper. And it might be that Luke lifts it up so obviously to make a point. And the point hits home. Namely that you and I even in the most sacred moments of worship, even when we're drinking the Lord's cup and eating God's bread, we still can find our minds wandering to the littlest and meanest of things. We notice that Joe's snoozing during the sermon. There's no one here named Joe that I'm looking at right now. Just sermonic illustration or we're agitated 
we're, we're here and we're coming to the table and we're still agitated about some argument that we started at home and we didn't get finished, we didn't get settled before we got here. Or we rehearse a real or imagined slight in the hallways. Or we're thinking about that coming confrontation, that, that coming showdown at work, and we're plotting how we can make sure that we don't get caught in the middle of it. It's called squabbling at the table. Even in the midst of worship, our minds seem wired to go to the littlest and smallest of things. And such responses to God's worship and such responses to the Lord's table are maybe regrettable, but they are not unforgivable. God knows that we can never hide from our human nature not even at the Lord's table. And the richness of God's grace is that He makes even our weaknesses into strengths. The miracle of this table, of this meal, is that God is intentionally intent on turning our weaknesses into grace. Jesus took their squabbling and he used that squabbling to teach them a lesson about true greatness. Jesus said, let the greatest among you be as the youngest and the leader as one who serves. In the normal course of things, J Jesus says, the one who sits at the table usually has more prestige than the one who waits on the table. Jesus says, but I am among you as one who serves. Well, if Jesus can make his disciples' crass behavior into a beautiful gift, then I believe he can make our frailties and our flaws into something beautiful as well. That's the amazing grace in this sacrament, in this Maundy Thursday memory. Today, tonight's good news is that the Lord's Supper both exposes our flaws and our frailties and then it heals our flaws and our frailties. I think of Dr. Thomas Dooley. Uh, Dr. Dooley, Thomas Dooley, an Air Force medic, an Air Force physician in the Vietnam War. Dooley, who accomplished so much to alleviate suffering in Vietnam before he died, wrote this during his last illness. Dooley wrote, Outside the wind blows, but there are times when the storm around me doesn't matter. A wilder storm of peace gathers in my heart. For how do people endure anything on earth if they do not have God? That's what this Last Supper is all about. Broken bread, you see, recalls a broken body given for a broken people like you and me. The Last Supper reminds us that we who were not denied God's very life will not be denied any portion of his love. We are promised in this meal that we have God and therefore we do endure. I have a friend who explains the Last Supper this way. He says, sometimes a child will fall down and skin his, his elbow or his knees. And all skinned up and wounded he, wounded, he cries and runs to his mother. His mother picks up the child and says, let me kiss it and make it better. As if mom has magic lips or something. But she picks up the child, she kisses the wound, she holds the child in her lap, and all is well. Why? Why is all well? Because the kiss made it well? No. No, it was the ten minutes in her lap. Just sit in the lap of love and see the mother crying. Mommy, why are you crying? The one that got hurt, I'm the one who hurt my elbow. 
But the mother says, sweetheart, because you hurt, I hurt. And just that sitting in the lap of love and hearing, because you hurt, I hurt, does more healing for that child than all the bandages and bandages and medicines in the world just sitting in that lap and then my friend explains the last supper this way he says the Lord's supper is to sit for a few minutes in the lap of God who hurts because we hurt You know what he's saying, don't you? This Jesus Mill says that there is a brokenness that is the world. But this Jesus Mill also says that there is a brokenness that heals the world. Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood, and this is the love that hurts because you hurt. This is the amazing grace of this sacrament, this Monday Thursday memory. Tonight's good news is that the Lord's Supper exposes our frailties and flaws. And then this Lord's Supper heals all our frailties and all our flaws. And so you and I now come to the Lord's table precisely uh, to bring our human frailties to this meal because this is the time, this is the place, and this is the meal where God accepts us just the way we are. And God gives us first what we need most That's his unconditional love. Therefore, as our communion stewards quickly make their way to the front, I invite you to participate tonight in this Lord's Supper, which takes the Last Supper of Jesus Christ and makes it right here, right now, right among us, as true, as concrete, and as powerful as that Last Supper remembered in Scripture.